Hey guys, so my twin sister Nicole and I are back for another video and this one we decided to take a swing and give it our best shot at the topic of dating. But a disclaimer first really quick, it's about 8 million degrees in this room. So if at any point during this video one of us just keels over and passes out, then, then you know why. So first of all, I think to get to the point of this video, why dating is so hard, we have to look at what dating is in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is to find a spouse. The end goal is marriage. Back then, it was largely understood when two people went out or courted or whatever it was called. I mean, that's like really far back. But I mean, even a couple decades ago, it was more natural and understood that when two people went out on a date, it was to determine whether or not the other would be a good fit for marriage. So it was like, can I see myself spending the rest of my life with this person? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, though, that has largely been erased and dating has been replaced with a sort of hookup culture. So apps like Tinder or going to the bar or club, this is naturally what people regard as dating. Mm -hmm. And if you, for example, were to were to go out on a date, a first date with someone nowadays, and be like, hmm, well, I, I'm looking over to see if maybe you will be the right fit for marriage for me. I'm going through the checklist. They would probably run for the I hills. Yeah. And even if you were like, well, I'm looking for a long-term commitment relationship, mm -hmm something serious they might be like oh you're moving a little too fast now yeah. slow slow down there yeah. and it, it's just it's completely been changed so if you have that mentality that's why it's so difficult if you go in and have that mentality then it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you because most people just don't think that way anymore so I think that the hookup culture has resulted in resistance towards commitment uh, this trade-up culture where you're constantly looking for a better person or just a low value placed on sex And I think this is why it's really hard for people who have that traditional mindset where they don't want to date like a long stream of people they uh, to find somebody who shares that same understanding that they're just they're looking to find the right person mm -hmm. and even when you say traditional mindset it makes you sound all like ho 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 you know all prudish but really how how extreme, how far out there is it really that somebody just wants to yeah. look for the right person to, to marry and not want to have to go date five million people and just or even just go date and have fun? Yeah. There are people that are looking for the real thing and just want to be serious about it. And I don't I don't see why that's such an abnormal thing, but it seems like it's become that way yeah. nowadays. Or just to be viewed negatively. I yeah, it, it's it's really incredible. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because I've gotten so many emails from people in the past, from girls and guys, saying, "Where do you go to meet nice people? Where, where do you?" And, and the like, truth is, I'm sitting know. there with a blank stare, like I have no idea. I really have no idea because the the honest truth is, and it's awful, but you really can go nowhere to meet the right person. It's they just they don't have an app for that. I'm sorry, yeah. not at least not yet, anyways. But I think it just it takes a lot of patience and and uh, waiting for the right person and not settling or not compromising your own standards because you know because it can get so difficult and so much time can pass and you can just lose patience and that's the really really hard part mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are more willing and more open to the hookup culture nowadays but if you are someone especially living in like a bigger city just mm -hmm. depending on your environment it can be very difficult to find someone if you're approaching from dating in the traditional sense of the word and to be honest it's I think it's difficult for the vast majority of people who think this way it was so difficult for me it's so difficult for Nicole before I met Martin I just I hadn't met anybody that I could that I thought of in the way, oh, I could marry this person. And it wasn't that there was anything wrong with them, per se. Yeah, it was, yeah, of course. I mean, I was just as wrong for them as they were for me. But it's yeah. very hard for Nicole, and maybe you can go into this, but I'll just say really quick, there's so many wonderful men and women that I've met in Austria, America, that there's nothing wrong with them. They're wonderful, they're good looking, they're great people, but they're having just as much trouble. We have one really amazing friend in, in the US, and she is very competent. She has a really good job, she's very pretty, she's very kind, she's a very good homemaker, but she just cannot find anyone. It's been impossible and it's, there's this sadness growing in her that she'll never find anybody. And I think that a lot of people are faced with this nowadays and, and it really is sad. Yeah, as Brittany said, it has been very difficult for me to find someone and it, it's not because I have some like long list of demands or anything. Of course, it's just the standard stuff. Like I, I would hope that someone would uh, share my political and religious views 
um, and one that will just take dating seriously like I want to. I've genuinely met some people where it's like, if you can't find someone, well, there's sure as heck ain't hope for the rest of us. Well, they'll have the looks, the personality, the job, everything. And it's just as hard for them as it is for all these other people. Kind of on that note, I think another reason that dating has become so difficult in our current society is because of the, it's this ever increasing ideological fragmentation just amongst everybody. So even in a group of feminists, half of them are going to disagree with one another. Even mm -hmm. in our right wing movement, ha you know, half of them are at each other's throats yeah. every day. Every day there's a new fight or people disagreeing or not wanting ha to have anything to do with one another. But many of these people would label themselves right wing. So it's not just you can paint everything with a broad brush and expect it all to work out. I think that it's a lot more complicated than that. Nowadays, it's it's just become so crazy. Back then you could disagree politically, for example, and mm -hmm. still be friends. But nowadays it's like, oh, you support Donald Trump. Yeah. I want nothing to and do with you. completely cut off. Like we were completely cut off from like a lot of our friends, even relatives are the whole mm -hmm. writing industry because you have a different opinion. So right away in the US, for example, half the country, if you are a conservative is just off the list because their chances are they're gonna want nothing to do with you just because of your political views. Or there could be you, you're some kind of religion, maybe you're Christian, for example, and then the person you're interested in is an atheist. Maybe that wouldn't work out because it's not just you two, it's how are you gonna raise your children? Are yeah. they gonna be atheist or Christian? There's so many fundamental questions that come into, that, that come into the equation here. So it's just, the, the thing is getting, it's getting more and more difficult, I think, especially with social media. Oh yeah, social media, it, it sort of postures to be this way where it can connect everybody. But really, it's this artificial connection. It's this artificial sense of community. I mean, how often do you just talk to somebody on the street? Or are you, you know, very sociable with people that live in your area? It's become more and more common for people to have these large friend networks online, mm -hmm. which you can't, it, it's just, it's very, very difficult. You need to be, have these people with you in person. Mm -hmm. I think you're spot on when you say artificial though, because at the end of the day, how many of these people online that you know are actually gonna be there for you? How many of them do you think will show up to your wedding, to your funeral, etc.? I think it's, it, it, yeah, it claims to be something that it's not, and it claims to be able to replace the real thing, real human connection in real life, but of course that is false. So there's just, there's so many things contributing to it, but as far as traditional dating, which is what the point of this video was, we think that that's why it's becoming so difficult because traditional dating has lost this, lost the sense of what it actually is and been replaced by a kind of hookup culture or a totally different mentality. So anybody who actually believes in this and is um, has made it a goal in their life nowadays are just very hard pressed to find someone because anything goes now, the, the waters are very muddied and when you meet people, you if you're upfront about it, they might be freaked out like you're moving too fast, but it is a very yeah. normal thing. You don't wanna waste their time and you don't wanna yeah. waste your time. Exactly. So the longer that you sort of, you know, would drag that out, that's why I think most people would say that not to, you know, be moving too quickly or freak people out, but they just wanna be upfront and honest about what what their views on dating are and what they're looking for, and that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. One other aspect that I wanna point out is that there's so much emphasis in our culture, especially in the West, where uh, romance is sort of glamorized. Mm -hmm. Everything is like a chick flick and everything's perfect and people forget that relationships take work, it's hard, uh, you have to work on yourself, you have to learn how to be more giving and they don't put that emphasis on that in life there's always going to be hardship and you're always going to suffer and uh, if people think, oh I don't find my prince charming, like right away, then they just move on and they're looking for something that doesn't exist. Having a list a mile long, like yeah. a guy having a list a mile long, a girl having a list a, a mile long. Like it's not to say that you should settle for somebody, oh, but not, let's, yeah. let's just not be unrealistic. Like he has to come in on a golden horse, yeah. and I think, you know, take me away to his castle. I think we've mentioned before too, uh, in a previous video where there was this, I think it happened to Brittany and I both, um, a lot of times we'll like think the same thought or have something the same happen, but we both said to our mother, mom, why aren't there any good people out there? And she's like, you gotta work on yourself. If you think you deserve a good person, work on yourself. And so that really resonated. Uh, and I think it comes down to that as well. Yeah, it was like a slap in the face yeah. for the good because yeah. you're inevitably, I think, at least to an extent, don't, going to attract the type of person that you are. So if you have these good qualities, you could probably attract somebody with uh, also these good qualities. And I think that's ultimately how it works. But I mean, it doesn't always work that way, I think, but 
as a general rule, yeah. rule, it does. And when you mentioned suffering, I absolutely agree. I think that love is, it's proven in the difficult times as opposed to the happy times because the happy, happy times, you don't really have to give as much effort. It's all done so willingly and it's so happy. But from all the people in our lives whose marriages have survived or just relationships in general, whether it be our parents, our grandparents, yeah. our older sister, they have gone through some yeah. very, very, very hard times. Actually, but, our grandparents just celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary and our parents yeah. have been married oh, over 30, over 30 years. years. Yeah, yeah, over 30 years. And my sisters are coming up on 10 years. So it's a very difficult thing. It's not always sunshine and rainbows, but I think that's a very good example that's been set for us. So we can be perf- prepared for that and not be like, well, if every day yeah. is in, I'm not waking up to, to you know, heaven on earth, then it's yeah. over. Yeah. So that's kind of the way we look at it now. But that could be, as you said, another factor on why not just it's hard to find someone to date, but also many relationships don't last. I think that's something that you pointed out earlier in this video about being patient and not compromising. And in the meantime, just working on yourself, like studying, trying to build up more skills, working on your health, working on your fitness, etc. If you do all these things and you're going to make yourself more valuable as a person and then eventually when the right person does come along, you won't feel like you wasted your time, energy, resources, everything on the wrong person who just wasn't looking for uh, what what you were looking for at the end of the day. Yeah. I think that's the best way and it sucks. Like it, it's yeah. hard to wait. It's it would be so nice if we could just walk out our door and, and meet the right person. But it, it's very difficult for everybody, I think, who who has this mindset. And I don't think that it's right to get discouraged. Like, it's only me because yeah. pretty much everybody we know, honestly, whether they're good looking, whether they're not, whether they have a good degree, whether they don't, whether they have a lot of money, whether they don't, it seems to be very difficult for everybody, people you wouldn't even suspect. Yeah, I think that's the best solution. And while solutions aren't always easy, mm -hmm. I think that this the being patient not settling is the best one in the end that you'll be be happy for yeah. at least yeah. when it comes maybe not the moment but when it yeah. comes anyways we hope you guys enjoyed this video uh it was kind of just all over the place but something that I'm always hesitant to make these type of videos because people are like, you're on your high horse giving advice to everyone. It's like, no, we're not saying it's the best advice in the world, yeah. but it's just what we think. And for the people that emailed and wanted to know, this is what we think. And hopefully you enjoyed it at the very least. But uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, just let us know. And if you want to see more videos with Nicole, please do let us know because yeah. she... We'll be, we'll be together through September, so we'll have yeah. the time for sure. And we really do enjoy filming together. So if you want to see more like this, then please let us know and even suggest some ideas and we'll be sure to to make those types of videos yeah. for you in the future so thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll see you next time bye, bye.